Well, good morning, friends, and happy Sunday to you. Uh, welcome to River Church Online Worship. I'm Pastor Randy Caulfield. Uh, in just a short time, uh, this space, our worship center, will be filled with people uh, worshiping together, but, but we're also making this video because we know many of you uh, are, are continuing to, to self-isolate, uh, and we, we respect that. In fact, I encourage you to do that if that's how you're so inclined, if that's how your heart leads, or maybe you have some physical reason why this is necessary. And so I want to love you and serve you as your pastor during this time of isolation. So that's why we continue to, to spend the time and put forth the effort in making these videos so that I might lead you in worship. And so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, in just a minute, we're going to get started. But before that, I encourage you to go and get your communion elements, bread and juice of some sort, because we're going to celebrate communion together. Uh, get rid of any distractions. Uh, fill up your coffee cup. Uh, you're going to need a pen, uh, your Bible, something to write on. Uh, so get all that stuff ready. Uh, if you have any questions about River Church, well, the first thing you can do is go to our website. Maybe you're new to River Church. Any and all questions can be answered at riverchurchrgv.com. Uh, but maybe you have some other question or need. Send me an email, randy at riverchurchrgv.com. Also, later on, at the end of the service, you'll have the opportunity to give virtually on our website. Okay, well, get your stuff ready, and we'll roll here in just a minute. It is so fascinating to me that Jesus was completely human. Now, he was completely God, but he was also completely human. We tend to, in error, think that he was half man. But the Bible tells us that he was completely man. He was fully human and fully God. So he was a man, in some sense, just like me, just like you, and therefore he was relational. He thought about life through this lens of relationship. He thought about who might go with him to lunch after church. Uh, he, he, he thought about whether or not his friends were getting along, it troubled him when his closest circle of friends had conflict. He must have considered marriage. And then he must have determined that it was not the will of his heavenly father that he get married. But he must have thought about it because he was a man. He was fully human. We see the humanity of Jesus just so clearly in the prayer that he prayed for us the night before his crucifixion. You see, on that night, he knew that he was about to die, and he prayed for us. He prayed for future believers. And what did he pray for? His deepest desire is that we would live in community, that we would get along. That was his last prayer on earth. Now, look, if, I, if I knew that I was going to die tomorrow morning, what I prayed about, what I would pray about tonight, that would be, you could determine that would be what I cared most about, what I most desired. And, and that was the case with Jesus. He prayed that we would get along and find friendship in the church. And, quote, be as one. Jesus knew that we tend to be as many, all scattered and, and separated. And so he prayed that we would be as one. John chapter 17 says, I am praying not only for these disciples, his 12 apostles. He says, I, I'm, I'm praying not only for them, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. So here he goes. This is his last prayer. He's about to go to the cross. He said, I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I, he's talking to his heavenly father, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, father, and I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. That's Jesus' prayer for us. Now, now, why would Jesus pray that? Why would he want that for us? And the answer must be because it's really good for us. 
The saddest people that I know are, are people that are, that are going, to, going alone in life. They're just my acquaintances because that's all they have. They only have acquaintances. They don't really have good friends. They don't take the time. They don't slow down and invest, drill down deep in relationships. It's all surface. And those are the saddest people that I know. Men, many of you men, I know you because I'm, I'm a man. Many of you men, you don't think you need friends. And also, you don't think anybody knows that you struggle inside the depression and loneliness. But it's really not such a secret. You see, the sad people that I know, they live in the darkness of isolation, a friendless sort of life. They withdraw and, and pull away from community and they pull away from any sort of web of friendships and they blame it on others and they live in isolation. Maybe that's you this morning. Or, or maybe this would describe you this morning. Like you want friends, but you just feel like nobody wants to be your friend. And so you live in isolation because you feel like that's what's been done to you rather than what you've done to yourself. Either way, I really believe the church is the place where we find friends. The, the church is the place where we find relationship and community. And that's what Jesus has always wanted for us. So the big question that we're going to answer this morning is, why is living in community in the church, why is it good for me? Because if I'm going to compel you to, to, to do that, to act on that, then, then, then you have to believe that it's good for you or you'll never do it. So today we're returning to a book in the Bible that we looked at last week, a, a book of the Bible known as First Peter. It's a a letter uh, in the Bible, in the New Testament. It's a letter wrote, of course, by the Apostle Peter. And he wrote it to the suffering Christian in churches in that region. These were scattered Christians, meaning they had been, uh, they had been persecuted in Jerusalem because of their faith in Jesus, so they had scattered broadly, and now they're, they're suffering, they're hurting, they're, they're not at home, they're going through um, isolation and, and difficulty. And some of us, we feel like we're going through isolation and difficulty in this, in this pandemic, in this crazy time. And so Peter writes to the church that's suffering, that feels all alone, feels separated. And so, like I said, this is week two of this, this brief teaching series. Uh, Peter's writing to the struggling church. So let me just remind you briefly of Peter's backstory. He's the author, but Peter, he was uh, one of the 12 apostles of Jesus, and, and Peter was the rock, and he was bulletproof, and he felt like he could do no wrong, and then he crashed and burned. And what did he do when he crashed and burned uh, spiritually, emotionally? He left the community of faith. Remember, he went back and lived in isolation. Um, he left the community of faith, and, and he went back to his fishing business, because um, that was safe. Uh, but then Jesus drew him back. Jesus drew him back to the community of faith. He went out, Jesus did, he went out to the, to the seashore where Peter was fishing. He made him breakfast and he said, listen, Peter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to come back to the community of faith. We're going to build this church. So he did. And so Peter writes today's passage to the suffering church as a person who understands Peter, under, Peter understands the, the, the loneliness of isolation when you leave the community of faith. And he also has a perspective on returning to the community of faith and living amongst friends. So this is week two, a community recipe for dealing with suffering. In our case, maybe it's anxiety, loneliness, disappointment, relational difficulty. Let's jump right in. First Peter chapter 5. He says this, Peter says to the suffering church, he says to us, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him. Be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering that you are. 
In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. And then Peter wraps up the letter like this. He says, I have written and sent this short letter to you with the help of Silas, whom I commend to you as a faithful brother. My purpose in writing is to encourage you and assure you that what you are experiencing is truly part of God's grace for you. Stand firm in this grace. And then he says this, your sister church here in Babylon, uh, most theologians believe, or many believe, that that was a code word for the church in Rome. Peter says, your sister church here in Babylon, or Rome, sends you greetings, and so does my son, this is his spiritual son, my son Mark, greet each other with a kiss of love. Peace be with you all who are in Christ. And with that, Peter ends his first letter to the church. There's also a second letter that he wrote. So today, the big question we want to answer is this. Why is living in community good for us? Why is it good for us? So why is living in community so good for us, so rich? There are three answers to this question. The first answer is because in community, we tend to stay alert. In, in, in the best sense of the, of the idea, we, we live kind of on the edge of our seats in excitement, in anticipation. We stay alert. In verse 8 of today's passage, Peter says, stay alert. Watch out for your enemy Right? When we live all by ourselves in isolation, we don't have friends, we tend to like fall asleep. We tend to just be taken advantage of by Satan. He's roaring, prowling, looking to devour us, and we just kind of let him. Peter says in community, in friendship, in relationship, we are to stay alert. Your enemy, he isn't often easily recognizable. If he was just this roaring lion that walked through the door, you'd run, right? But he comes to you to tempt you and to destroy you in much more uh, subtle ways. And so, so Peter says, stay alert, and he means spiritually. He says, stay alert, and he means emotionally. And when we have Christian brothers and sisters, when I specifically have Christian brothers speaking into my life, it causes me to stay alert, to be aware to, to have my guard up and to be ready when Satan comes at me with temptations and with lies. I'm, I'm alert. I'm ready for it. And therefore, I am successful, victorious in, in beating Satan, uh, uh, seeing him be the one who's destroyed rather than me being destroyed in, in my own mental and, and spiritual life. Uh, so the way that works out for me is, is that I really have two uh, friends that I call on a regular basis when I'm struggling. And, and they, they, they speak into my life. They, they tell me, you, uh, you're experiencing some stinking thinking, Randy, like you're, you're way off in how you're seeing this. Uh, you need to, he, they, 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 give me, they give me better ways of seeing my situation. They say, hey, Randy, when you tell yourself that, you're lying to yourself, Randy. Like maybe I say, you know what? I feel like I'm I'm bad at being a pastor. I'm bad at being a dad. I just kind of, just kind of suck at everything, you know. And I, maybe I don't say it that way, but in in very real, fragile at times, uh, fragile uh, ways at times, I I express my own my own frustrations and my own uh, sense of failure. And they'll they'll speak truth into that lie. My friend, my friends will. They'll say, Hey, Randy, that that's that's a lie from Satan. That's not who you are. Uh, he's he's roaring prowling about trying to take advantage of you and, and they they help me think uh, better thoughts true 
biblical thoughts because because in in a relationship we stand we tend to stay alert and spiritually and emotionally i'm i'm alert i'm awake i'm aware they're speaking truth into my life the second way in which living in community is good for us is that in community we tend to find strength and courage that's what i'm talking about with my my two friends we, we tend to stay alert and we tend to find strength and courage that's what the next verse that's what peter says peter in verse 9 says take courage and then how does he encourage us to take courage he says this he says you're not alone peter says remember other believers they're suffering too and we're all in this together and ultimately at just the right time the lord will deliver us uh, and, and, and he will make us stronger in the process. Now listen, dear friends watching today, I want to give you permission. I want to give all of us, all of us, uh, permission to, to feel a certain feeling, a certain way. I want to give myself permission, cut myself a little slack, to feel a certain way. Um... I want us to realize that, that it's just kind of natural right now in this period, this COVID pandemic. It's just kind of natural. Every one of us, we, we feel kind of like a failure. And I just want, us, I want to give every one of us permission to admit that and, and to, to, to deal with that collectively and to, to talk about it and realize, well, maybe, maybe it's not really about me. Maybe it's not really about you. It's just kind of the time, the, the era the, the, the difficult uh, period that we're living through, that we all are struggling with these feelings of failure. And Peter, in this passage, he's saying, look, what you're suffering, like other Christians, are, they're, they're feeling the same way, so let's get together and let's talk about it. In isolation, we don't talk about it. And I think I, I'm the only person that, that feels like a failure. Nobody else. But then you get together, you're like, oh, we're all struggling with this. Maybe it's not me personally. Maybe I'm not really a failure. It's just kind of the time the era that we're living in and that's how satan is attacking us collectively he's telling all of us like you're a failure and you're a failure and, and that's really a result of pulling away living in isolation lying to yourself but then we come together and we're like oh we're in this together we're kind of suffering the same sort of stuff feelings together um you know maybe maybe uh i can relate to this maybe in this period of of isolation pandemic you you feel like a failure as a parent. You know, like March, Mar the March 30, well, how many days are in March? March 30th, let's say. You know, you're already like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible at, at teaching my kids. <laughs> They're not gonna learn a thing. Uh, and then you get through the summer, you get into the summer and you're like, this is the summer from uh, somewhere else. Like this, like we can't get out and my kids hate me and I, maybe I kind of like done with my kids as well. And, and like, you feel like a failure as a parent. Young mom, maybe you know this is your first go around. You're like, man, if this is the way that it is, uh, then I don't know I can do this, you know? And we, we tend in isolation just to think like, this is uniquely how I feel and no one else understands. But that's not true. We're, we're all going through these same feelings of just failure, but you're not a failure. Maybe as a teacher, maybe you're teaching in the public school, teaching in private school, and these are the most challenging days you've been through. And maybe you feel like, I'm just not getting through to my kids. Maybe you feel like a failure as a, as a, as a friend. You know, I can kind of relate when I feel like, man, I, I haven't called all my friends lately or friends aren't really reaching out to me. Maybe I'm not a very good friend because they don't want to check up on me they don't even care you know and 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 we, we we feel like this all of us we feel like this failure in in life maybe as a as a an employee you feel like you're not giving your best game to your employer maybe as a church member you feel like you're kind of checking out and failing the church maybe not maybe sometimes as a pastor i i feel like a failure what we need to do is as the passage says, says, we need to show ourselves grace, show one another grace. He says, you know, hey, look, Peter says, look, just a little while, and we're going to get through this together. Uh, what you're experiencing is 
truly part of God's grace to you, it says, which means that ultimately it's good for you. It may not seem like this time of struggling is good for you, but, but Peter says, ultimately what's your experience, it's part of God's grace for you, so stand firm in this grace. What that really kind of means is like, show you, cut yourself some slack. Don't be so hard on yourself. We're gonna get this through this together. In community, we're gonna get through this together. Show yourself grace. I, I've said this before. You're often harder on yourself than the Lord is. And Peter says, let's get together. Let's live in community. Let's afford one another grace. Let's be gracious to ourselves and just trust that the Lord is in this difficult time. And at just the right time, he's going to pull us out of it and there'll be a new day. Peter reminds us that in just a little while, Christ Jesus will restore you. He will strengthen you. He place you on a firm foundation. Rest in that. And then the third answer, why is living in community good for us? Third answer is this. In community, we tend to find love and acceptance. Now let's review. The three answers are, number one, in, in community, we tend to stay alert rather than fall asleep. Number two, in community, we tend to find strength and courage. We're in this together. And number three, in community, we tend to find love and acceptance, which at the end of the day is one of our greatest human needs, right? To, to be loved, to be accepted, to feel like I'm okay and who I am as a person because people have my back. People love me. They accept me. It's like one of the greatest human needs, if not the greatest human need. We need to be afforded grace by others. We need to be noticed and appreciated by others. We need to learn to afford ourselves personal grace and to, to say, I'm okay with myself. I accept and love myself. And so in this passage, it's so interesting as he closes up the letter in that last paragraph, Peter, he speaks of all the friends that he loves so dearly. Uh, he speaks of the church that he loves so dearly, but he loves the church so dearly because he loves these individuals so dearly. He speaks of Silas and, and Mark, and he speaks with such... Um, loving, affectionate terms. He speaks of the church in Rome. And he says, I love these people. They've been so good to me and they're going to be good for you if you get to know them. It's just a ragtag bunch of Christians. They were poor and they were persecuted. And, and we know from history, mostly um, uneducated because they were poor. And yet they loved one another dearly. I have friends here at River Church who, on a regular basis, they, they love me and encourage me and, and, and tell me what I mean in their lives. And, and I think of Rick, and I think of John, and I think of Dave, and people that just on a regular basis with their words, they're just gracious and encouraging. And when I'm down, little words that, 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 that aren't, aren't really uh, lengthy even, uh, they, they just lift my soul. And that's what we find in the church. That's what we find in community, in relationship, is we find love. We find acceptance. So I ask you right now, if, if you'd have the courage to be honest with yourself, what is keeping you from living in community? Would you say you're too busy? Would you say that you don't like the people around you? And in, in, in love, I would say that both of those attitudes are really born out of pride and arrogance to say that you're too busy for what Jesus most wants for you, which is relationship. Or to say that you don't even like the people that are around you. You're not going to be friends with somebody until you find the person who, I don't know, is just like you. Both of those attitudes are they're not good for you. They're, they're toxic 
They're also sinful in that they're prideful and they're, they're arrogant. I said this last week, I'll say it again. It's a pretty heavy statement, but it's, I believe, a true statement. There is no category in the Bible for a disconnected Christian. And you say, I go it alone, I'm a lone wolf, I, just me and Jesus. Well, I'm not going to judge you, but I would just say this. In the, New, in, the, in the Bible, in the New Testament, in all the teachings of Jesus, uh, there's, there's, there's no category for a Christian who pulls away and lives all by himself and lives isolated. There's just, that animal doesn't exist in the Bible. Just words for you to think on. I invite you now into community. If you've been like Peter and you wandered back to your fishing business and you're going it alone, I want you to consider coming back and living in community. And in this next section, I'm going to tell you what those opportunities are. Okay, and on this last section, I want to, I want to tell you uh, ways in, in 2021 that you can get you know, involved, engaged, find friendships, be in a gospel community, a Bible study, a, a find new friends here at River Church. Um, and so here's what we're offering, and we're going to be rolling these out in December. Uh, we're almost there, and then in January of 2021, we'll, we'll hit the ground running. So in December, you have the opportunity to to sign up, to, to join, to, to commit or recommit. So here are the opportunities. Uh, first of all, Lydia Caulfield, my wife, and uh, Priscilla Russell, so they're sisters. Uh, they're going to be uh, leading a ladies group. They're going to be doing the Through the Bible in One Year study, and so they'll be leading. Uh, this is an opportunity for you ladies to get connected. Uh, Lydia and Priscilla, kind of in the in the. Uh, Following in the footsteps of their, of their mama, Mary Ann, they're going to be uh, leading ladies. There's another opportunity. This is for men, uh, myself, uh, Pastor Randy, and, and Victor Delgado. We're going to be leading a men's group, probably in the mornings, but we haven't really set all the details yet. And uh, we're going to be reading through the Bible in a year. We're going to use the Daily Walk Bible. And I, I've, I've done that a number of years. We're going to do it again. And if you'd like to join us for that, that'd be awesome if you're a dude. Um, uh, their offering is that Andre and Susanna Zook, they're going to be leading a co-ed online uh, uh, weekly prayer and prayer group, community night group. Uh, but again, it's online. And so that would be another way for you to get connected. And it will be on a Zoom or a, a FaceTime or something like that. And, and it will be a, a, cool, a cool opportunity. Uh, number four, Billy and Elise, uh, with the help of our new friends, Milan and Elena, they're going, to, they're going to be leading a co-ed in-house uh, Bible study. And I think it's going to be of all ages. There's going to be some young adults in there and married couples and maybe even some older people in there. And that'll be a good opportunity here. And that's going to be here in Brownsville. Um, there's going to be a weekly uh, community night online. And those details, we've been doing that uh, all throughout the, the summer and the fall. But those, the details to that for, for 2021 will, will, will be uh, announced soon. Um, there's going to be a, a Los Fresnos gospel community. Um, we're still determining all the details on that. And then there's some other groups uh, in Brownsville and the surrounding communities that we're going to roll out. But we're still, we're still defining the parameters of those groups. And if you have ideas, ways that you'd like to help out, let me know. Randy at RiverChurchRGV.com. Or if you want to sign up, uh, join one of these groups, let me know. There will be some really easy ways for you to sign up in the next few weeks. So those are our offerings. I invite you to consider that, friends. We are better when we live together. We are better together. Let's, let's join together and live in community in 2021. Perhaps no Christian symbol represents community and relationship in the church better than the, the, the picture of of the bread and the cup of communion as we gather together to, to eat and drink and celebrate Jesus. And so I'm glad that in this difficult period of, of, of a pandemic, we can continue to gather virtually at the table of communion. And now right here uh, in the worship space, we still celebrate communion and we continue to celebrate Jesus. On that same night, that night where he prayed for us that we would uh, be unified, that we, we would be as one, uh, he also broke bread and 
and drank from the cup and, and celebrated communion together with his disciples. And he said, from now on, when you do this, knowing that we would be doing this 2,000 years later, he said, from now on, now on, when you do this, do this remembering me. Jesus broke the bread and he blessed it and gave thanks. And then he and his disciples ate of it. And he said, this is my body broken for the forgiveness of your sins. He held up the cup and he gave thanks. He blessed it and he drank from it and the disciples drank from it. And he said, this is my blood shed for the forgiveness of your sins, my, my body and blood. From now on when you do this, do this, remembering me. And so that's what we do, Jesus. We celebrate you in, in the bread and the cup. We celebrate your sacrifice for us. Uh, you conquered sin and death in the grave and now you ru rule and reign on high. And so uh, we celebrate you, Jesus. I invite you right there in the privacy of your own home. Maybe you're by yourself. Maybe you're with a small group of friends. Maybe you're with your family. Break the bread. Drink from the cup. And in so doing, celebrate Jesus. Okay, friends. Well, that's a wrap. Uh, again, I'm honored to be able to come into your home and, and, and lead you in worship today. Listen, if you have a need, if you have a question, uh, maybe you are, are new to Brownsville, new to the church. Maybe you have no real connections, but you would like to get connected. Send me an email, randy at riverchurchrgv.com. If there's any way that, that, that we, your elders, your pastors at River Church can, can serve you, can help you, can pray for you, send me that email and we will do all that we can to help you. Now's a good time to go online, uh, go to the website and give virtually. Uh, it's safe, it's intuitive, it's quick. It's fun. Um, everything that we do here at River Church is based on your good gifts. We would have to shut down, close the doors if you didn't give. So thank you. If you've not been giving, uh, maybe this is your first Sunday to give. That would be awesome. Go to the website and give. You can also send a check to our P.O. box, and all that information can be found on our website. All right, friends. Well, uh, I love you. I am praying for you, and you have a great day.